output devices, I/O devices. Okay. The first one is opto coupler. Okay. So let us see now what is this, this uh, opto coupler. Opto coupler is a solid state device uh, which is used to uh, isolate two parts of the circuit. Opto coupler combines an LED and a photo transistor in a single housing package. Okay. It uh, it combines of a you, you could see this block here LED and a photo transistor in a single package. Okay. Inside a single box, we have both the LEDs as well as the photo trans transistor, and these are the interfacing between input and output. Okay, so in electronic circuits, optocoupler is used for suppressing interference in data communication, circuit isolation, high voltage separation, simultaneous separation, and intensification signals. Okay, optocouplers can be used in either input circuits or in output circuits. Okay, so this is one simple block I've already told you. So here we have uh, one microcontroller with respect to that the interfacing part is uh, given here optocoupler in input and output circuit okay so this is the input interface where we have an LED and a photo transistor and here at the output we have one more output interface where one we have an LED and a photo transistor this the input of this LED is given to the microcontroller that is AT89C51 okay and when registers are used to uh, uh, control the flow of signals and uh, pass the accurate signals which required, okay, the VCC is the voltage supply and here at the output end, it is given to the register and is given to the LED part and the output port pin is given to the negative end of the LED part and again it is given to the output of the photo transistor and this is the output interface getting, okay. So these two are called as opto couplers, okay. So these two the combination of LED as well as photo transistors at the input and output part for interfacing part, we call them as optocouplers. Okay, so th this is the diagrams and the explanation. You please make a note of it. Next, we have onboard communication interface SPI bus, that is serial peripheral interface bus. This SPI bus is a synchronous bidirectional full du full duplex four wire serial interface bus. The concept of SPI is introduced by Motorola. It was introduced by Motorola. It is a single master multi-slave system. Okay. It is possible to have a system where more than one SPI device can be mastered, provided by the condition only one master device is active at any given point of time. It requires four signal lines for communication. They are master out slave in, MOSI, master in slave out, MISO serial clock that is SCLK and slave select okay so these are the four signal lines for communication okay master out slave in or uh, we, could, we could be saying here it has bus lines master out slave in master in slave out serial clock and save slave select so the MOSI is a signal line carrying the data from the master to slave device it is also known as slave input master in slave out is a signal line carrying the data from slave to master okay it is also known as slave output serial clock is the signal line carrying the clock signals and slave select is the signal line for the selection of the slave device in an active low signal okay which slave is selected uh, which that could be decided by the slave select line so this is the interfacing diagram okay so we have MOSI, SCL, MISO one master and two slaves okay so the two slaves in this case they have taken it as a serial EEPROM and LCD okay you could uh, make a note of this okay very important okay so this was about SPI bus next is external communication interface Bluetooth okay so Bluetooth Wi-Fi Bluetooth and I don't know about Zigbee, but Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are the most common source of internet that is used for communication purposes worldwide. Everybody are using Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Right now, I'm recording this using uh, uh, Microsoft Clipchamp software and I'm using Wi-Fi. Okay, so that's why this Wi-Fi and Bluetooth technology are commonly used worldwide and uh, I hope everybody might be knowing this. So this is a sure short question if they give for exam. So this thing, this Bluetooth and Wi-Fi about Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you could be writing it in your own words, how much you know. Okay. Yeah. So uh, according to this, some, there are some theory given here. So that I'm going to re uh, re read it out to you. Okay. First is it is low cost, low power, short range, wireless technology for data and voice communication. 
So this operates at 2.4 gigahertz of radio frequency spectrum and uses the frequency hopping spread spectrum that is FHSS technique for communication. Bluetooth supports a theoretical maximum data rate of up to 1 megabit per second and a range of approximately 30 feet for data communication. Bluetooth communication has two essential parts. First is a physical link part and the protocol part. The physical link is responsible for physical transmission of data between the devices supporting Bluetooth communication and the protocol part is responsible for defining the rules of communication. Okay, so these are the two essential parts of uh, Bluetooth communication. First is physical link part and the protocol part. The physical link works on the wireless principle making use of RF waves that is the radio frequency waves for communication. The Bluetooth enabled devices essentially contain a Bluetooth wireless radio for the transmission and reception of data. The rules governing the Bluetooth communication is implemented in the Bluetooth protocol stack. Okay, the, this is the stack where the, uh, the restrictions of Bluetooth is uh, implemented. Uh, the restrictions of Bluetooth are stored and uh, with respect to that, they, it gives the warning with respect to the usage. Okay, for example, if we have the certain time limit of Bluetooth to be used, it gives a warning that uh, uh, the time limit is uh, expiring. So that's why this is the uh, implemented using the Bluetooth protocol stack. The Bluetooth communication IC holds the stack. Each Bluetooth device will have a 48 bit unique identification number. So this is there for any of the devices which you use Bluetooth. Okay. If you go to the settings of the Bluetooth, this number would be there. Okay. It is a 48 bit unique identification number. Bluetooth communication follows the packet based data transfer. Uh, Bluetooth supports point to point or and point to multi point wireless communication. Point to point means device to device and point to multi point means device to multiple devices. Okay. So if you uh, see the Bluetooth connections, if you connect from one device that could be accessed by any other multiple devices, right? Yeah, the point to point communication follows the master slave relationship. Uh, a Bluetooth device can function as either master or slave. Okay, a network formed with one Bluetooth device as master and more than one device as slave is known as PicoNet. Okay, so if they ask in general, uh, uh, what do you mean by PicoNet? A uh, that is a network formed with one Bluetooth device as master and more than one device as slave. Okay, that device, those kind of uh, network devices under Bluetooth are called as PicoNet. Okay, so this was about completely about Bluetooth theory part. Okay, so I, uh, this, these and all are the uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, radio, radio frequency spectrum, one megabit per second range of proximity physical link part, protocol part, the two essential parts and all the underlying stuff are there, right? Those are new to you guys, but uh, other things about Bluetooth, if they ask in the exam to extend the answer, you could write it in your own words, how much you know, because you are, we all are using Bluetooth in our daily lives. Okay. So it is easy to write the answers. So whatever I've uh, highlighted here, main points, uh, you please go through it and uh, include these points when you're writing the exam, when it comes, when the question arrives. Okay. Next is next one more important external communication interface is Wi-Fi. The full form of Wi-Fi is wireless fidelity. Okay. I hope uh, everybody, most of them, I hope they might be knowing this wireless fidelity is the full form of Wi-Fi. It is a popular wireless communication technique for networked communication of devices. Okay. If you want to connect the net or the internet, what we do, we on our Wi-Fi hotspot. Okay, uh, due to that, what happens? The the device with the one device's network connection would be transferred to other device. Okay. It is a popular wireless communication technique. Wi-Fi follows the IEEE 802.11 standard. Okay, as the server. So this is the server here which they have used. That is the IEEE 802.11. Wi-Fi is intended for network communication and it supports internet protocol based communication. Wi-Fi based communications required an intermediate agent called Wi-Fi router or wireless access point. So this is required Wi-Fi router. So this is the, this Wi-Fi router is simply a place where the uh, multiple Wi-Fi connections are stored. For example, in a, if you take a particular, uh, in a college, if you take a particular lab, okay, where the, there are, we have around 30 to 40 systems in a particular lab. And for all those, in order to provide the Wi-Fi connection, 
we should be having a controlling part and that part is called as Wi-Fi router where the signals are transferred to all the systems. Okay. The Wi-Fi router is responsible for restricting the access to a network by assigning the IP address to devices on the network, routing data packets to the intended devices on the network. So this is the main purpose of this Wi-Fi router that is it restricts the access to a particular network. Okay. If you want to restrict a particular system that is uh, uh, if you want to cancel the network of a particular system that could be done by these Wi-Fi routers. Wi-Fi enabled devices contain a, wi a wireless adapter for transmitting and receiving the data in the form of radio signals through antenna. Wi-Fi operates at the range of 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz of radio spectrum and they coexist with other ISM MAN devices like Bluetooth. A Wi-Fi network is identified with the service set identifier that is SSID. A Wi-Fi device can connect to a network by selecting the SSID of the network and by providing the credentials if the network is security enabled. Wi-Fi networks implements different security mechanisms for authentication and data transfer. Wireless equivalency protocol that is WEP, uh, wireless protected access WPA etc are some of the security mechanisms which are used by Wi-Fi networks in the data communication. Okay, so this was everything about external communication interface Wi-Fi. Okay, so see here, I've told you right, one simple scenario of a Wi-Fi router you see here. From this Wi-Fi router, the Wi-Fi connection is given, taking place, uh, is uh, distributed to all the devices. So these are the three devices, device one, two, three. Okay, so I hope you understood this part. So Wi-Fi. So Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are done. So this is the last part. Uh, this is not commonly used, but uh, in the syllabus it is included. So that's why I thought to cover this part that is uh, Zigbee. Okay. Zigbee is low power, low cost wireless network. Again, it is a wireless network communication protocol based on IEEE 802.15.4-2006 standard. Zigbee is targeted for a low power, low data rate and secure applications for wireless personal area networking that is WPAN. The Zigbee specification support a robust mesh network containing multiple nodes. This networking strategy makes the network reliable by permitting messages to travel through a number of different paths to get the to get from one node to another. The Zigbee operates worldwide at the unlicensed band of uh, radio spectrum mainly at 2.400 to 2.484 gigahertz, 902 to 928 megahertz and 868 to 868.6 megahertz. Okay. So Zigbee supports an operating distance of uh, up to 100 meters and a data rate of 20 to 250 kilobytes per second. The Zigbee is primarily targeting the application areas like home and industrial automation, energy management, home control security, medical patient tracking, logistics and asset tracking and sensor networks and active RFID. Okay. So automatic uh, meter reading that is AMR, smoke and detectors, wireless telemetry, HVAC control, heating control, lighting controls, environmental controls, etc. are the examples for applications which can make use of this Zigbee technology. Okay. So this uh, Zigbee technology also they have mentioned here that is uh, in the Zigbee terminology each Zigbee device falls under one of the following Zigbee device category. Okay. So this Zigbee uh, as, uh, as far as as far as as far as I've read, so this Zigbee is basically a single device which is used to control multiple devices. Okay. So again, it, it uh, has the relationship with the uh, common relationship with that of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well. Okay. It, so with respect to that, we have Zigbee coordinator, Zigbee router and Zigbee end device. Okay. So this is the simple block to represent the Zigbee here. So make a note of it. Okay. So that's all guys. I didn't, I didn't know much about this Zigbee. So that's why I went on reading this, but uh, this uh, is very important. So that's why I thought to cover this.